What's up everybody? So, we're back out in the shop, and I bet you're wondering, why did Eric release a video on Sunday? And it's Sunday evening. Why did that happen? So, I'm going to go ahead and do a daily vlog for this week, because, for one, just so y'all know, I sell cars for Honda, and we're going to be doing everything set up on appointment based only, so I'm going to have a ton of free time this week, and I figured, hey, why not go ahead, do a daily vlog, that way y'all actually get to see a little bit more about what I do in the shop on a daily basis. Uh, the guys over on my Facebook page get to see a lot of it. Uh, if you haven't done that yet, go over there, check it out. It's TRE Workshop on Facebook. And uh, yeah, so go check that out. But what we're going to be doing today is kind of finishing up some things and starting some things. I've got some sheaths that... I need to end up getting finished up. One is for the military inspired knife. The other one is for the survival knife right there. Now we're going to get those knocked out. And then this week I am going to be working on these knives right here. There's another uh, cool little camp knife that I'm working on right there. And then some uh, Tontos that are going to be pretty cool. Now, these will have their own videos dedicated to it, but you will get to see some of the stuff that I do on a daily basis with these in these videos. But we'll see how it goes, see what y'all think about it. These aren't going to be huge build videos. I do still have a build video that's going to be coming out on Friday, so y'all will have that. But And then of course we're still going to do Shop Talk Tuesday on Tuesday, but for Sunday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, and Saturday, y'all will get a smaller video. We'll see how it goes, see what y'all think about it. But let's jump into working on some of these sheaths and get those knocked out. All right, let's do it. What we're gonna go ahead and do here is grab one of these eyelets. I like to use it to help me measure the line that eventually we're gonna end up cutting on, but I use this line to be able to center the holes that we're gonna use for drilling. We're going to go ahead and get the area marked where I'm going to end up shaving up to the finger choil. So what we're going to do now is go ahead and kind of get an idea of the main hole, which is the one that's going to hold this ulti clip. We're going to get it marked and then I'm going to mark the rest of the holes spaced out from that. And we're just using an old uh, holster clip that I have here. It's got the measurements that I like on it. So go ahead and use that to mark these out. And I decided on this one to go ahead and do a horizontal carry on it. There's those holes. Now we're going to go ahead, use the center punch, and get these holes, of course, center punched. And we're just going to drill some pilot holes. I like drilling the pilot holes. It's a personal preference. You do not have to do that. But I will tell you, here's one of the tips that I can give you is these Christmas tree slash step bits, whatever you want to call them. Um, step bits, the technical term. There's actually probably even a more technical term than that, but I, it's a step bit. Whenever you're using these, it does not melt the kydex. So it leaves really crisp, clean holes. And all you want to do is just use one of the eyelets to make sure you're drilling to the right size, which is quarter of an inch in this case. But you can see here, it leaves really crisp, really clean holes and does not melt the kydex. Now we're going to go ahead and cut on the outside of that line that I drew just to make sure we have plenty of excess. And I do like to use the bandsaw to cut out the bulk of what I'm about to shape on the oscillating spindle sander here. 
And I love this. It gives a good, nice, tight radius on that area where your finger is going to go. And then, of course, we're using a 400 grit belt. This is just a ceramic belt. And I like the 400 grit. It puts a good finish on it prior to me doing the hand sanding. And this belt doesn't tend to melt plastic. What we're going to go ahead and do here is hand sand with 500 grit first and then I am going to take it all the way out to 1000 grit. And if you've noticed it, I haven't done any eyelets. So you do all of this stuff before you put any eyelets in it. For one, you don't want to accidentally nick one of the eyelets with the sandpaper and sand off the black finish or whatever finish your eyelets come with. Do all this stuff before that. And there's another step that you'll want to do uh, before you end up putting the eyelets in. And I wish that somebody would have shown me this on the first one that I did. Uh, but that, uh, that step is actually taking it and rinsing it out. So we're going to do, we're going to just use the spigot on the back side of my house. Partially because I don't need to be <laughs> doing this inside my house. I try to do the least amount of knife making uh, in my house as possible. Now we're going to go ahead and put one eyelet in. And this is just because we're about to adjust the retention area of this sheath. And we want to keep it to where it needs to be because we're about to open up an area and if we don't have that eyelet in it's not going to be able to do the part that we're doing right now. And what I'm doing is I'm loosening up the area that would typically hold my retention and that puts the retention to where it snaps the ricasso into place. But the ricasso on this knife is a file because this knife was made out of a file and I always leave that area like that. So if we were to leave that on there, it would not be good. What we are going to do now that we have the area where the ricasso is opened, we're going to pinch the sheath around the handle because what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the handle as the area to hold the retention. These are G10 handle scales and they can withstand being pushed in and out of this sheath for many of years. I'm going to go ahead and get this ulti clip mounted up and I am using a rubber spacer that you would see on gun holsters and things like that in between the sheath and the ulti clip. Just goes on there, clips in place. I love the clip because it actually really attaches it to your belt. It makes it to where that draw is just real smooth. All right, so this turned out pretty awesome. We got that ulti clip on there. And then, like I was talking about with the little section that I had to do differently, this little section right here, where I would normally have my retention on the ricasso near that uh, sharpening choil, I had to do it onto the handle for this knife because, of course, this is still a file. That whole ricasso area is still an actual file, and if you put all the retention there, it's just going to file away at the sheath and put filings inside the, the sheath and scratch your finish, so you don't want that. I had to get a little crafty with it, and we do have that, uh, we do have that thumb notch right there to help take it in and out but guys now tell me what y'all think about that you know this is ambidextrous you can wear it uh left-handed right-handed all you got to do is just flip the clip and uh you can wear it in the front you can wear it scout carry in the back however you want to do it i would suggest if you're going to wear this on your belt that you definitely get a good quality hefty belt or a leather belt this is my uh my gun belt i typically wear my 
holster with this one so whenever I'm concealed carrying and all that now uh, that's pretty much it right there and guys like I said I'm gonna do a video like this pretty much every day this week and uh, y'all be looking out for it make sure that if you haven't yet subscribe to the channel and turn on notification turn on the notification bell so you get notified of whenever I make all of this type of stuff and for these videos um, I will be doing them throughout the whole week and like I said I might go into next week depending on how this whole COVID-19 coronavirus crap goes but guys you have an amazing day I'll catch y'all next time